our manager was twisting our arms and, and saying, well, if, if you don't do this to her, you know, you, you'll never work again, um, kind of thing. And Richard said, Linda, you can't go. I mean, you'd be mad to go. And I said, I'm going. It was difficult, you know, it was, uh, you know, there's a lot of personal animosity and uh, so somehow um, we did it. People say, we saw that tour and it was fantastic. You were kicking him on stage and hitting him. Well, I wasn't doing it all the time, but there was certainly a load of tension. I had been in this restricting Muslim thing, you know, praying five times a day and covering myself up and everything. So here I was getting drunk, living on tranquilizers and singing. I've only sad stories to tell to this town. My dreams have... Linda was... Um new definition of loose cannon. I just looked around for the emergency exits, you know, made sure I knew where they were. When she wasn't sort of in a quivering heap of jelly, you know, she was, she was capable of really singing some of those terribly hard lyrics. You know, walking on a wire, excuse me. Walking on a wire was just about, you know, hanging on to a, a life disintegrating. You know, I never say very much, many good things about myself as a singer, but I think the one good thing I can say is, I'm not kidding. What scares you, you don't know. Whichever way the wind might blow. I was in the audience. It was amazing to see. They were great shows, there was a lot of tension on stage. It was truthful, you know? I mean, they didn't come out and pretend that something wasn't going on. It's entertainment. <laughs> you can't, you couldn't beat it. Richard was being incredibly brave, incredibly stoic, and probably extremely stupid for um, putting us all through this. The feedback I've got over the years with Lizzie is uh, a very tough to, uh, to do. Uh, all credit to him for getting through it. And then the day I had to fly home, I thought, well, I'm not going to drink anymore. I threw the pills away and tranquilizers. And it came home and sort of started again. I mean, I, I, you know, I wasn't in great shape, but, you know, I came home and sort of started again. While Linda went on to remarry and vary her involvement in music, the tour had gone some way to establishing Richard in America where he has steadily built up a bigger audience than in his own country. God knows what his career would have been like had he stayed in Britain. There is this uh, syndrome in England, you know, about the tall poppy. And it, it does encourage a lot of people to kind of put their heads down and be a little bit more tugging at their forelock. America opens you up a little bit more to the idea of, yeah, I'm here, come experience me now uh, to of course a fault as we all know but I mean I think it's been good for somebody like Richard because that can take a big weight off you if you've been slogging through the music business for years you know because uh, it's not a nice business Time to ring some changes. Time to ring the song. 
It was during a solo tour of America that Richard had met that certain someone else, Nancy Covey, who ran the folk club McCabe's and was to become the future Mrs. Richard Thompson. I met Richard, uh, well, I hired him to play at McCabe's, which was the club that I ran in Los Angeles. I didn't really know how it would go. I mean, I knew he was a great musician, but boy, people came out of the woodworks. It was a who's who of the music scene and the people in the know all showed up at those shows. I remember when I went to see a show and I brought my dad with me and I said, look at this line, dad. This is like the highest IQ ever in one place in Los Angeles that's ever I've ever seen. Everybody looked like Elvis Costello. Time to ring some changes. Time to ring some changes. I remember he sat in a chair and he was very quiet. And he just he just played. And I thought, this is kind of a depressing guy. You know, the music was incredible. But entertainment-wise, it was pretty, you know, pretty hardcore stuff. I was really surprised at how he was on stage because the person I met was this witty, charming, interesting, really fun, humorous guy and that's that's who i live with that's who i'm married to oh. good, good, that one. Hi. after initially setting up home in london these days richard and nancy spend much of the year in los angeles where their son jack goes to school don't show any pain. the thing i noticed about richard after he and nancy got together was that he obviously and deliberately shifted his focus of professional interest to the other side of the atlantic it was immediately obvious that he was going to concentrate much more on raising his profile in that marketplace. After his somewhat haphazard path through the 70s, the 80s saw the emergence of a more focused and career-minded Richard Thompson, with an increasingly scornful worldview evident in his songwriting. his relationship with Linda was still hanging around. Every story you read, every review focused on his personal life and tied the songs to it. And I would imagine that's pretty wearying. This is where we started to see more character stories, more narratives, more, more little short stories, songs, as opposed to the ones that were sort of soul in agony, his own soul in agony, as it seemed. And I, he might deny that they were about him. He might deny that they, that they were, but it certainly seemed that they were from his, his life. And I suppose it was time to move into new territory. <laughs> 